Um, I wish that someone would explain to me what just happened in physics. Uh, because something happened this week that has been described to me as, for sure, the biggest scientific story of the decade and possibly of the century. Well, it turns out we have with us this week one of the greatest physics communicators that there is, and also one of the geekiest illustrators that there is, Randall Munro, who runs XKCD. Put the two together, a little bit of magic, and wow, here are four minutes that just might blow your mind. Alan Adams. <laughs> So on Monday morning, a small group of scientists announced what is, to me, one of the most spectacular discoveries I'm likely to see in my lifetime. I love this. So I want to tell you the story of what they found. If you look deep into the night sky, you see stars. And if you look further, you see more stars, and further galaxies, and further more galaxies. But if you keep looking further and further, eventually you see nothing for a long while. And then finally you see a faint, fading afterglow. And it's the afterglow of the Big Bang. Now the Big Bang was an era in the early universe when everything we see in the night sky was condensed into an incredibly small, incredibly hot, incredibly roiling mass. And from it sprung everything we see. Now we've mapped that afterglow with great precision. And when I say we, I mean people who aren't me. We've mapped the afterglow with spectacular precision, and one of the shocks about it is that it's almost completely uniform. 14 billion light years that way, and 14 billion light years that way, it's the same temperature. Now, it's been 13 billion years since that Big Bang, and so it's got faint and cold. It's now 2.7 degrees, but it's not exactly 2.7 degrees. It's only 2.7 degrees to about... Ten parts in a million. Over here it's a little hotter and over there it's a little cooler. And that's incredibly important to everyone in this room because where it was a little hotter, there was a little more stuff. And where there was a little more stuff, we have galaxies and clusters of galaxies and superclusters and all the structure you see in the cosmos. And those small little inhomogeneities, 20 parts in a million, those were formed by quantum mechanical wiggles in that early universe that were stretched across the size of the entire cosmos. That is spectacular. And that's not what they found on Monday. What they found on Monday is cooler. So here's what they found on Monday. Imagine you take some hot, or you take a bell, and you whack the bell with a hammer. What happens? It rings. But if you wait, that ringing fades and fades and fades until you don't notice it anymore. Now that early universe was incredibly dense, like a metal, way denser. And if you hit it, it would ring. But the thing ringing would be the structure of space-time itself. And the hammer would be quantum mechanics. What they found on Monday was evidence of the ringing of the space-time of the early universe, what we call gravitational waves from the fundamental era. And here's how they found it. Those waves have long since faded. If you go for a walk, you don't wiggle. Those gravitational waves in the structure of space are totally invisible for all practical purposes. But early on, when the universe was making that last afterglow, the gravitational waves put little twists in the structure of the light that we see. So by looking at the night sky deeper and deeper, in fact, these guys spent three years on the South Pole looking straight up through the coldest, clearest, cleanest air they possibly could find, looking deep into the night sky and studying that glow and looking for the faint twists which are the symbol, the signal of gravitational waves, the ringing of the early universe. And on Monday, they announced that they had found it. And the thing that's so spectacular about that to me is not just the ringing, though that is awesome. The thing that's totally amazing, the reason I'm on this stage is because what that tells us is something deep about the early universe. It tells us that we, and everything we see around us, are basically one large bubble, and this is the idea of inflation, one large bubble surrounded by something else. This isn't conclusive evidence for inflation, but anything that isn't inflation that explains this will look the same. This is a theory, an idea, that has been around for a while and we never thought we'd really see it. For good reasons, we thought we'd never see killer evidence, and this is killer evidence. The really crazy idea is that our bubble 
is just one bubble in a much larger roiling pot of universal stuff. We're never going to see the stuff outside, but by going to the South Pole and spending three years looking at the detailed structure of the night sky, we can figure out that we're probably in a universe that looks kind of like that. And that amazes me. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thousands of universes. Amazing. But they finally found so, Alan, this is this. this is the week that science basically got confident that there really are multiple universes. That's what you're saying. It's a parsimonious explanation. It's not confirmation yet, but it's not good. quite confirmation, but it is parsimonious. <laughs> That's terrific. Okay. At TED over the years, over the last 30 years, there have been um, uh, a lot of predictions made, um, most of them quite sort of techno-optimistic and whizzy and wonderful. Um, here's one that was made by Oliver Stone six years before September 11 that was not that. The World Trade Center is our problem because that's where the terrorism is going to come from. It's going to come from our blowback around the world. It's blowback, all of it. And when we die, and there's going to be, I, I, I predict, significant terrorist activity in the next 10 years in this country, and civilians and innocent people are going to die, and it's going to be, there's going to be some horror stories ahead. And, I'm, uh, and there'll be a call for war again and revenge and all that stuff. But think back to where it all originated and think back about blowback. You can't act like a policeman and a thug and internationally monitor the world through the CIA and do all the shit that we've done and not expect something to come back at us. Not six years, three years before September 11. But uh, nonetheless, it was about around that time that um, uh, our next speaker was undergoing his own uh, very personal encounter with terror. Here's Zach Ibrahim. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Keep Pardon. going. Keep going. No, that's fine. Yeah. On November 